whether it's for a data warehouse for files or to help keep training data for deep learning more organized, Azure Data Lake Storage is great to store a large amount of data. And Azure Databricks is also a great way to use Spark to either explore that data or to create your deep learning models. However, to get Azure Databricks to read from Azure Data Lake Storage isn't the most trivial thing to do. There are quite a few steps to allow access, which are spread across different documentation pages. So in this video, I'm going to go over those steps to show how to read Data Lake Storage from Azure Databricks. And I'm going to assume you already know how to create the Data Lake Storage and Azure Databricks services from the Azure portal. And so there is documentation on the Databricks site, which mainly shows the code you would use to hook up the Data Lake Storage either by mounting it in the Databricks file system so you can access it, access it through your entire cluster or to get direct access to it through the Azure Data Lake web address. But up at the top, it kind of briefly mentions how you can get the credentials needed to access Azure Data Lake storage. And it just links you to Microsoft's documentation. Now this shows what you have to do in Azure to give Databricks access to your Data Lake storage account. We'll mostly go through this document. However, there was one point in here where I got stuck that I'll point out when we get to it that makes a difference if you have access or not to Databricks. So the first thing is to make sure you are allowed to create an app registration since you will need to do one here. To check that in your Azure portal, go down to Azure Active Directory, then to User Settings, and on the blade here, there is a section to see if you're able to add app registrations. If you can't, you may have to ask your admin to change that for you. Now to create the app registration, still in the Azure Active Directory section in your, section in your Azure portal, go down to app registrations, then click to add a new app registration and just give it a name and keep the application type as web app API. For the sign-on URL, you can have this anything you want. And I'll just put in localhost slash sign-on and then click to create it. And with the newly registered application, we can get the application ID and generate an authentication key. So we will go into the app registration and right here is where we can get the application ID. We'll copy and paste this to keep it handy. And to generate our authentication key, go to Settings, and then Keys. And we'll give this key a description, such as Data Lake, and click Save. When clicking Save, it generates a key for us, and we need to copy this down now because once we close this blade, we won't be able to get to it again. We need to generate a new key. And so we'll copy and paste this out as well. Next, let's get the directory ID, which is also called a tenant ID. We'll go back to Azure Active Directory in the Azure portal and then go down to Properties. And right here is our directory ID, so we'll copy that over somewhere as well. So that you can see there's quite a, quite a few IDs to copy over for this, so you can see what I meant by there being a lot of steps. There's actually one more thing we need to do, and that's to assign the application we created to a role. So go to Subscriptions in the Azure portal and go to your subscription. Then go to Access Control and select Add. There is where I got hung up on when I first went through this because the screenshot in the documentation shows selecting a role of Reader. What I did instead to get it to work is to select the Owner role. With that set, search the name of the application that you registered and select that. Then click Save. Now that everything is set up in Azure and we're now in a new notebook in Azure Databricks with the cluster running, we'll use the code on Databricks documentation to mount our Azure Data Lake storage account to the Databricks file system. And we'll replace the placeholders with the appropriate IDs and keys. And to mount to Databricks, we'll update the source with the name of our Azure Data Lake storage account. Then we need to create a mount point, which is just the name of our mount in Databricks. This name always begins with a slash EMT, and you can give it whatever name you'd like after that. I'll just call mine train, and we'll execute the cell. 
And to confirm we have everything set correctly, I'm going to query the Databricks file system. You can use the dbutils object here, but I'll use the shortcut with the %fs magic command and do an ls on the mount name. And we have a list of our files, our files in Azure Data Lake Storage, which confirms we have mounted it correctly. So I hope this video helped make it easier for you to connect to your Azure Data Lake Storage account to Databricks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.